been dealing with me on something, and you know, lots of times I like to just share with y'all what God's been dealing with me on. And if you've got your Bibles, open them up to the 24th chapter of Matthew. Are you recording this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Margie says I need a microphone. <laughs> There we go. Is that better? Yeah. All right. But the Lord's been, been speaking with me on some things and dealing with me on some things, and we're going to read out the 24th chapter of Matthew. Now, as we go through this, some people let fear creep in their hearts at this, at this kind of message. Some people make them afraid, it makes them scared, because it's unknown. But as we go into this and we begin to read this, understand something. This this is not about fear. This is about you winning. Amen. Okay. This is about you finishing the race. This is about you seeing the end of all things and be able to go live with your Father. Amen. This is about you going where Jesus promised. Amen? Amen. So this is about us winning. We already know we win because the book doesn't tell us the devil loses. We go to heaven and sinners burn. Don't mean to say it like that, but it is the truth of the matter. The devil loses because he's already lost. God's children needs to go be with him. And those who rejected Christ Jesus go to hell. It, it, it's, when we say somebody, we make the mention, we say that somebody's going to hell, we don't like to hear that because... You know, we think, well, we have a loving God, but God doesn't send nobody to hell. Somebody chooses to go there. You see what I'm saying? God don't sit there and say, I think I'm going to send you to hell. God says, you had the choice. You could have accepted my son. You could have come on up here. But since you rejected my son and you didn't want Jesus as your Savior, there's nothing I can do for you. Amen? So in the last days... You know, that's, what, that's what's going to happen because the Scripture tells us that God in, will divide the people up. They'll have the sheep on one side and they'll have the goats on the other side. We being the sheep and the world being the goats. Amen. So th this is a part of, of Scripture. This part that we need to keep in our hearts. We, we need to understand. And this, this message is to bring this back to remembrance. Amen. It's just to bring it back to remembrance. Things that we should know anyway, things that we should keep in our hearts. Sometimes we get so carried away with the day to day things of life, you know, and we, the things going on, we fail to remember how great God is, how powerful God is, how terrible His judgment is, His wrath. Amen? Amen. These Amen. are things that we don't remember. So when we're witnessing to people, if we start keeping these things in our heart, what it's going to be like when that time comes, it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to say, hey, you don't want to go to, you don't mind, you don't want to be in that part of it. You need to be in this part. You need to be in the good part. Amen? The guy said, well, I was listening to this interview, and I may have made mention of this before, but I was listening to the Moody Broadcast it was a long time ago where we live at. We can go to work at on the Christian station. We can pick up. You know, so we would listen to it. And this guy was talking and said that he knew, this atheist guy that he knew, and the atheist told him, he said, if I believed in hell the way you Christians claim to, he said, they would nothing in this world stop me from grabbing everybody I come across and tell them about Jesus. So if we believe in the oncoming judgment that the Bible teaches, then it's time to start saying, hey, you know, so we was talking at the house the other day. If we knew, if you knew for a fact that Jesus Christ was coming back in 2016, would you be living your life any differently today? If you knew for a fact, you would, wouldn't you? You'd be living your life a whole lot different. There'd be a whole lot of people getting hell preached right out of them, wouldn't it? But here's the thing. Bible scholars will tell you this, and you, if you listen, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I, I study and like everybody else does and listen to God. But every prophecy that is needed to be fulfilled for Christ's return has been fulfilled. That's right, amen. So we're playing Russian roulette, more or less. Because we don't know. It could be now. It could be three seconds from now. It could be ten minutes from now. It could be ten years from now. But we know His return is any minute. Right. Any second, Christ could come back and call His church. Amen? 
any second Christ could come back and call his church and we'd be gone. We need to keep that mind. We need to live like I heard this girl singing this song one time back years ago. I think it was one of them whinings. Then you'll see see whining and all them. I don't remember which one it was, but this girl would sing this song. May not be her. But in the song she said, I'm going to live my life every day like Jesus is coming tomorrow. But I'm going to plan my life like it's a lifetime away. Amen. And I thought, you know, that's really good advice. If we live our life every day like Jesus is going to be back tomorrow, well, go ahead and we make plans. We pray, God, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, direct me. You know? And you, and you say, you think sometimes, you say, well, why, why does the Holy Spirit give these people all these long-range plans if Jesus could be back tomorrow? Because it's simple enough, Jesus out of his own mouth said, the angels, not even the Son of Man, knows. Only the Father. Only the Father knows the day of the return. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is doing what Jesus told him to do. Jesus said, I, mean, I don't fully, I'm not going to claim to fully understand that statement because I don't. I don't fully understand it, but I know what Jesus said. I don't have to fully understand, I just have to know He said it believe it. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's, it's the same. I mean, it's just faith. You know, I don't know how he heals people when he heals them. I just know that he does. You know, I don't know what he did differently in me when he saved me. I just know he did. Amen? Amen. And it's as simple as that. We just take it by faith. Okay, this is what you said, Lord, so this is it. But in the 24th chapter of Matthew, starting in the third verse. It says, And he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things be. What shall be the signs of thy coming in the end of the world? And Jesus answered, and he said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And see that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Take key, he said, in the fourth verse. Let no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We don't think too much in our heads because we live here in America and Everything's this, that, and other. We don't think too much about that. But if you watch the news and, and you see things that are going on, there's a guy down in Miami who's told everybody, he's Christ. He said, I'm Jesus. His church has over a thousand people in it. How does somebody come down here in mainstream society and say, I'm Jesus, follow me? And a thousand people get deceived like that. And they follow him. And he's not the only one. This stuff is kind of kind of stuff that's happening all over the world. People are being deceived by the spirit that has come out, the spirit of Antichrist come. And it's deceiving people. It's leading people away from the truth. Amen. So we know that that's happening. I mean, that's happening big time right now in our own life. We just don't see that because sometimes we got blinders on, we don't look, we don't pay attention. You know, they talked about um, Sitting up on the watchtower, watching and praying. Couldn't help it. As far as I thought, that, I thought, all along the watchtower now. Anyway, <laughs> old Jimmy Hendrix song. But, you know, we need to be watching. Searching these things. Look for them. You know? Just look for them. Look for Because he said, these are the signs of my coming. We want to know, you know, Jesus, you know. When is the time? Well, look for the signs. The signs are right out there in front of us. We see these things. Watch the news, see this stuff, and they will broadcast stuff, and you'll see what's going on in the world. Like I said, this guy was not the only one of them. Then you got David Koresh, remember that? Waco, Texas. You got Jim Jones. All these people leading large groups of people to do things by saying, I'm Christ. People being deceived and following. You know? let, let me just tell you this, okay? And for everybody that's going to be watching on that camera, here's a simple fact for you. When Jesus comes back, he will not be hiding somewhere. 
saying, I'm Christ. He will not be walking up to you saying, oh, by the way, I'm Jesus. When Jesus comes back, the sky will split, the earth will tremble, and you will know beyond any shadow of a doubt that Christ has made His return upon this earth. Amen. Amen. You won't have no doubt. You won't have no problems knowing because He will come in His full glory and you will see Him the way that He is, whether He's meant to be sent. And you won't be able to stand in front of Him. You will fall to the ground because of His glory and His power and His anointing and who He is. And you'll worship Him. You won't be able to help it. It'll just happen. Because everything that's inside you knows that He is worthy to be worshipped. Amen? And He's worthy to be praised. So when Jesus comes back, He won't be some man in the secret chamber. He won't be some man on TV saying, I'm Christ. He won't be somebody forming a church. It won't be none of that. When Jesus comes back, He talks about when He steps up on the, on the Mount of Olives that the mountain splits. You see what I'm saying? When He comes, He's coming back in power and glory. He's not coming back in His flesh again. Amen. He's coming back in His power and His glory. Amen. Amen. So we know that when Jesus comes back, He's not going to be some guy in a three-piece suit telling you good words. Jesus comes back, He's coming back to do some more. Amen. Don't, don't confuse the rapture of the church with the second coming of Christ because it's not the same thing. When the church is taken away, it's taken away. When Christ comes back, We'll be following on the white horses. We'll be ready to fight and make some war behind our Savior. Amen? We'll be ready to grab the Antichrist and, and the false prophet and all those people that are serving them. They're getting crushed. Black and I'm going to use my Georgia vernacular so everybody will have to deal with it. They're ready to get their butts kicked. Because that's what's going to happen. Amen? We'll come back. We'll be that army behind them along with the host of heaven. To establish his rule, period, paragraph on this earth. Boom. Just close your eyes for a minute. Picture yourself on a white horse with a sword and a shield. Amen. And the spirit ready to go out and walk somebody's butt. Every demon in hell, every anything that exhausts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Because that's your destiny. If you're saved, you're born again. That's what waits for you. Mm -hmm. All this, this stuff that we think about, we think about the tribulation and revelation and all this being scared. It's not us being scared. You know what I think what it really is? I think it's the devil projecting his fear of what's going to happen to him on you. That's why you get scared. Because the devil fears when he hears these things because he knows at the end of it all what's waiting him. You know, maybe he tries to project that fear on us as we feel, but there's nothing to fear for us. We're to be ready for it, to be excited about it because finally what we've been waiting for it's fixing to happen. Amen? Amen. Amen? Nothing to be scared of. Nothing to be terrified of. But he said, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and deceived. Many. He said, You shall hear of war and rumors of war. To see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. We look out right now. And uh, I would say we're seeing more war. And more rumors of wars that are fixing to take place than we ever have. Amen? Amen. You know, and this goes beyond this whole crap with ISIS and Al Qaeda. And all this. I mean, look at the Russians in Ukraine. They're still going at it. You know, they backed out, told everybody they's backing that other, and all of a sudden, here they are again, attacking again. You know, we see all these things happening, and it's going right in front of us. And it's like you know, we're kind of like, Duh, I got to pay the light bill. I got to go work overtime again. We got to go work, but I don't like what you know. It's time to come to the place where we start putting our priorities in order. Man. You know, yes. What matters most? You know, that's, that's what me and Gina was talking between us. You know, what matters most anymore? Is it God's word, or is it the things that my flesh wants? Which is most important? You know, and we all know the answer to that. That's a, a, a no-brainer question. We already know the answer. But it's just bringing ourselves under subjection, bringing our flesh under subjection and say, okay, God, I'm ready to serve you. I'm ready to do what you want me to do. And he says, the nation shall rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. See, like I said, there we see that happening. Amen? We see the nations. We talked about Russia and the Ukraine and all these other nations that are at war and things that are going on. But we're also seeing kingdom rise up against kingdom. 
Now, there's a difference between nation rising up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. If you look at ISIS and Al Qaeda, they're not from one country, are they? It's a demonic kingdom, isn't it? It's a demonic kingdom. And it's rose up and pulled up together. And these people pulled up together in their own little kingdom, so to speak. And they're making war against everybody they can make war against. They're hurting everybody that they can hurt. You know? We, we see these things that we talk about and it scares us so bad and what we think about when the Antichrist comes and all that. But yet, our Christian brothers and sisters are living through that now. You know? I seen a, I cry, I seen a picture last night and I, I cried. That turned off because I can't look at that, Lord. It showed a bunch of um, KIDSs laying there on the ground. Bullet holes, everything else. Where ISIS has went through and killed them because their parents were Christians and wouldn't convert you know, they took a whole town. I don't know if y'all remember, but they took a whole town. It was a Christian town. And because the people would not convert to Islam, they cut their children's heads off and they hung them upside down on the power lines and stuff. You know, this is happening now. This is not some far-fetched thing that we think about in the future. This is going on right now. And one problem we have as Americans is we think that everything in this world circulates around us. But it doesn't. It circulates around the Middle East. Israel in particular. Right. But that area, everything revolves around there. It don't revolve around us. Amen? We're kind of sitting here on the back burner watching these things, even though they're as great and powerful as we think that we are. You know, God's God. And all these things that are happening over there is stuff that He's describing right now, isn't it? We're seeing it happen. We're living through it. We're seeing it going on. But he says, kingdoms shall rise up against kingdom. He said, there shall be famines. Are we seeing famines in the world right now? Yeah. Have we been seeing famines in the world? For a long time, ain't we? And they're not getting better. He says, and pestilence. You know, we fail to realize some of the things, I mean, that's been breaking out. What was This Ebola? How many people has it killed? I guarantee you the whole time we've probably been sitting on the cure for it somewhere, but it's not coming to start with <coughs> that's And then they're saying, what was I seeing on the news? Measles. Measles breaking out in California. And they said, but this disease was gone. We thought we had it wiped out. And it's not. The disease is a pestilence. Especially when it comes and it hits like an epidemic like that. It's become, it's a pestilence. And we're starting to see those kind of things happen. And break loose in, in more and more and more. You know, when we fail to realize that God's time is not our time. Amen. I mean, we started seeing these things, some of us, when we were teenagers, start breaking loose, like when age broke loose. And those kind of things started breaking loose in the world and stuff that nobody had ever even heard of before. Where did it come from? <coughs> well, college <coughs> time was growing near. Amen. He said, in earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes happening everywhere, more so now than there ever has been happening. Causing tsunamis. Yeah, all kinds of stuff, you know. And it's stuff that's not been happening with the frequency that it's been happening now. Why are things increasing? Because time is growing shorter. And Jesus says, in all these, they're just the beginning. This is just the beginning of sorrows. He said, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because of iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Sin is abounding and abounding and abounding. Because I mean, think about this: How could these these people overseas <coughs> do these things to other human beings? I mean, really. How can they do these things to other human beings? But the iniquity has grown so much that their hearts is wax cold that it doesn't even face them. Man, we're seeing that in our own country. We're seeing that with our, in our own, you know, kids going in schools and gunning down people. And why? Why does their heart not tell them, hey, no, 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 that's not right. You don't need to do that. Because there's no love there. There's no love there. It's gone and their hearts are going to cold. See, without love, there is, there is nothing for the heart. Amen? 
the heart. There's nothing for the heart without love. You know, and I'm not talking about you know, loving your cat, loving your dog. I'm talking about God's love. Without God's love in your heart. Amen. And we see this stuff happening day by day and day by day and day by day. It increases more and more and more. It's because it's getting to be that time. It's getting to be that time. Amen. And in one part of the scripture, Jesus said this. He said, When I get ready to come back, it will be like the days of Noah. What were the days of Noah like? You go back to Genesis and you read, and it says that the thoughts of men were on evil continually. Continually thinking up something evil, continually dwelling on something. And you can now, Richard hit the nail right on the head this morning. I'm going to hit the nail right on the head. I'm sitting in the aisle, I'm going to go ahead and repeat it, but I'm going to say it. He hit the nail right on the head. You know, what did he say? He said, we're Christians, we wouldn't do anything like that, but we'll pay Hollywood to have somebody do it so we can watch. If he took a thought about things that are even projected on TV, you know, the, the hearts of men are on evil continually. There's continually something evil being shown. There's continually something evil happening. I know for a long time, a couple of years ago, I would watch a, a Law and Order SCU or SVU, Special Victim. I thought, man, I, I, and I, I kept wondering, you know, as time went on, I'd watch that show and it'd be on every day on the cable, and I'd watch it, and I'd watch it. And I, I started for, I'm going to use one of Gina's words, I started feeling drenchy. Sort of inside, I was just getting to the point of, ugh, ugh. Lord, why, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? And then the Holy Spirit revealed to me, you're putting all this garbage in every day, every day, every day. You know, something really bad happens in that show every day. Somebody gets killed, somebody gets raped, somebody gets murdered, something. And it's all the time going on. And here I was feeding them that to my spirit steady. And wondered why I felt the way that I did. You know? And it's not a what we would say a bad show. Uh, we're watching the good guys win and triumph and do it all. But look at all the evil that you're seeing. Look at all the evil that's coming to pass that's showing up. You're feeding it to you. You know, you're feeding. That's because right now, in this world, the hearts of men think upon evil things all the time. That's why God flooded the world. Because of the evil that abounded in the world. And that same evil has crept back in. That same iniquity has started to grow back in us again. As a, as a, I guess as a species, I guess, I don't know. As a human race. It's starting to grow in us again. And it's starting to manifest itself because it's so prevalent in this earth. You know, it, it's time that we really start realizing what's going on and what's happening. And then he goes on and he says this. Oh. Back to the days of Noah. Also, Jesus said it might be like in the days of Noah that people will be eating, drinking, making merry, getting married, and all this kind of stuff. It'd be just life as usual. So when the flood came, they wouldn't expect it. They had no clue. Only Noah did because Noah was the only righteous man that was there, and God spoke to him, and he was obedient to God. Only Noah knew what was coming. And then when it happened, and when he could you imagine? These people, be like, and all of a sudden, boom! Sudden destruction fell on. Well, here's the good news: you're not ignorant. Okay, you're not ignorant. The word ignorant meaning we know the word ignorant means unlearned. You're not unlearned. God has chose to warn you. This is coming up. I put it in my word. He said, "This is coming up. This is fixing to happen." So we're not ignorant of what's fixing to happen. We know what's fixing to happen, don't we? That's right. So since we're not ignorant of it, and we do know, we're not going to be caught by surprise, are we? That's right. We're going to be sitting there saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you, Father. Lord, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. I'm not going to worry about all this other junk going on. What I'm going to do is put my focus on you and doing your will and what you want me to do. Because when you come back, I want you to find me doing something that I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. Help me find, help me be in the spot where I'm doing something that I'm supposed to be doing. Amen? 
don't don't be like the evil servant that thought that his Lord was going to tarry and begin to drink, begin to run around with the drunk, start beating up people, and so well the Lord's not coming back. Not yet, but when the Lord came back, what did it say? He said, Yeah, he got him, found him, and he cast him into the outer darkness. Now when he said servant, he wasn't talking about the lost, was he? He was talking about a saved person who said, Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll repent later. God's, God's not coming back yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I want to do. And then I'll get right with it later. No, it's not the way it works. If he comes back and you ain't doing it. See what I'm saying? That's why I said, blessed is he who overcomes. You know? We're over. He said, God made you overcomers. He made us overcomers. He gave us the ability to overcome this world. See, there's not nobody sitting in here under the sound of my voice, nobody sitting out there watching on YouTube or whatever who can say, I don't have the ability to do what God called me to do. Because God put it in you when you got born again. Before you got born again, no, you didn't have the ability to do it. You were a sinner. But when He saved you and you became a new creature in Christ, you were no longer a sinner but a child of God. And when you became a child of God and He resurrected your spirit, then you had the ability to do those things that you needed to do. Amen? To overcome. So we all have that power. We all have that authority. We all have that strength within us to do what God's called us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. That was weak. When you stop in faith, God has given you this. And it should be a hallelujah! Praise the Lord! I can overcome. I'm an overcomer. I have overcome this world through Christ Jesus. Amen? That's what it should be. Hallelujah! No more of this light footing around stuff. You like that word? Light footing. I made that up. There's a lot of foot and around stuff. There's no more use for it. We don't have to tippy toe through the tulips and hope we don't wake the devil up or we don't offend somebody. Or it doesn't matter anymore. All that stuff is gone. All that worry is gone. That was nothing but baggage that the devil put on you to begin with. You weren't meant to carry that. What you were meant to be was be bold. And go out and proclaim the name of Christ no matter what was going on, no matter what was happening. That's what you were meant for. You were When you were recreated, when you were rose up inside and your spirit was made new, and you were born again, and you became that new creature of Christ, who lives in you? Jesus. Jesus. All right. Only a few people know who lives in Let's try this again. Who lives in you? Jesus. Jesus. And if Jesus lives within us, I'm waiting on y'all to get that. When Jesus lives within us, there ain't nothing we can't do. There you go. There's nothing that we can't do because why? Anywhere in the scripture did you read where Jesus stood over in the corner going, Lord, I hope they don't come over here because I just I just really don't want to talk to them. I don't want you know I don't want to scare to them about salvation. I, I, Father, no, I uh -uh. there was people that may be hiding from him. You know. Hey, let me tell you. You want him? Get up out of that wheelchair. You know, you want to see here. Boom, there you can see again. Repent, you bunch of sinners. You bunch of, what do you say? You bunch of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath which is to come. That know what he told the religious people at that time? He was bold. He was strong. He was able to go, hey. 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 <laughs> The time is now. Get saved. Amen? Amen? That's who lives in you. That's who, when you walk around, that's who you carry with you. Thank you. That who is alive in you is Jesus is alive in you. Amen? So you have that boldness that He has. No, so I didn't say have. I said has. You have that boldness He has to go out and be able to say, you need born again. You need Jesus. You know? Did you ever see one, one, one ounce of Scripture where Paul was timid? Or where Peter was? They were bold, wasn't they? What did they took? Or Peter trying to look at that one guy. He said, I perceive you are full of God. You know? Hey, 
You're wrong, buddy. Let me tell you. You're just wrong. He wasn't scared. So then Ananias, why did you lie to the Lord? Listen now for the footsteps of the men coming to carry you away. It was yours to do with what you wanted to. You didn't have to lie about it. Boom. Peter goes out. They throw him in prison. The very next thing you know, he's out preaching again. He's not scared. You know, Paul gets stoned with rocks. Paul gets stoned. They throw rocks at him. They kill him. They walk, they go away. And God raises Paul back up. Paul's up preaching again, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He wasn't scared. Because why? Because there was only one thing that mattered. That was getting the gospel out. That drove him. That was Paul's drive. Was to share Jesus with people. That's the same drive that we're supposed to have. See, the church in America has got so lazy. We've set back that when we think that we're doing good just because we're able to make it on church three Sundays in a row. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm doing good. I've been to church three Sundays in a row. Yeah. And that's not what it's about. Yeah, we're supposed to come to church. The Bible says, forsake not to sin with yourself together, which is the man or son. Mm -hmm. Especially what? As you see that day fast approaching. Amen. We see that day fast approaching. We best not be forsaken the semblance of ourselves together. What Scripture says. Amen. You know? We come to church, it's great. You know? But what are we doing outside these four walls? Who's hearing about Jesus outside of these four walls? You know? I'm not going to go really any further into it, into that scripture because I, I, the point that the Lord was wanting to get across has come across, which is Jesus saying, I'm coming back soon. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back soon. My return is near. Be ready. Be ready. Be prepared. Be ready. Amen? Be ready to go. Be ready to do those things that He's called you to do now so that when He comes, He'll find you doing them. And He can look at you and He'll say, Enter in, my good and faithful servant. You're blessed. Come on in. Amen? But I told him I didn't know exactly what he was going to preach on because we, I really didn't know. I mean, we kind of talked a little bit. He started preaching at the house, kids love it when he starts doing that. At least now they do. Anyway, they used to hate it, but now they seem to appreciate it a lot more. But, um, you know, I've been listening to everything that's been coming across these past, I don't know, six, seven, eight months. And it all, it all brings me back to... You know, it, it is hard. It is hard to to be a Christian. Or at least the devil wants you to think that it's hard. Especially in this world that we live in. But, um, I just, I, I want to encourage everybody just to remember that, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That we wrestle against principalities, wickedness, and all that stuff. So, when we accepted Jesus in our heart, we did it by what? By faith. Faith of the Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. But so there's also other, there's another realm out there. And, and I'm not trying to, to, to glorify this wicked realm. But that's what we are told that we fight against. And that's what we're told that comes against us 24-7 all the time. I got to... Uh, just listen to several different people this week, and they've really, they've had to battle. I mean, they battle every day. They battle all of these things that Carl's been talking about that, that keeps our minds so bombarded of what we really should truly be focusing on, and that's having our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as long as we can keep our, as long as the enemy can keep our minds just bombarded with these things that come against us, whether it be I don't know, fear, anxiety, pain, um, you know, you name it. But it, it comes against us. Um, 
finances, if, we, if we're bound down by finances, by our jobs, by our worries, by things that, that really don't matter. As long as he can keep these things bombarded, we, we are not even caring about what's going on over there, like he said. But we have to fight these things in the spirit. Now, how do we do that? By developing our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to, there's an army rising up, people. Amen. There's an army rising up. And we're either going to get in and we're going to ride those white horses now so that we can ride them later, or we're not going to be able to ride them later. We have got to get in this army and we have got to fight. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it by the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we're not good. We have to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. I was telling Margie last night, I see the enemy, he reaches up and he's just pulling at everybody. At everybody. And he think, he's trying to get everybody to believe that he's got you guys. And he doesn't. He doesn't have you all. He does not have you guys because God's pulling you up. That skit that we did, that, that just ministers to me so much every time I think about it. You know, we're... Um, where the girls accepting Jesus in their heart, you know, and then all the things of the world start pulling her away from Jesus, drinking, you know, what she looks like, drugs, and then, you know, finally spirits of suicide. All these things are spirits, okay? They're pulling you in, trying to, trying to get you to think that there's something else better out there, and there's not. The only thing, the only true thing that is out there, the only true spirit that's out there is Jesus Christ. You have to get that in your spirit. You have to, to let him just guide you through this walk that we're in down here because there's a greater, there's a greater good that he wants us to do. And as long as he can keep our minds bombarded with all this other stuff, then, then we're missing it, people. We're missing it. So anyway, and then at the end of the skit, you know, a girl finally realizes the Holy Spirit's tugging on her heart and, and, and finally realizes, and she just, she takes off running back to Jesus. And what do they do? They're grabbing hold of them, and they're pulling them back. Well, what is that? You know, with, uh, with me, you know, when I was hooked on prescription medication, you know, I would throw it away. I know I'm not supposed to do this. But my body would just tremble and my body would shake and, and things would go crazy and I couldn't think straight. So I go grab me another one. What was it doing? It was pulling me back. It was pulling me back. Now this time it, it was I was having to take more, you know, so that it would make my flesh feel better. And I'd have and I had to take more. You know, and finally it almost, almost had me in. Down into the pits of hell. Almost. Almost had me there. But now I saw the Holy Spirit in prayer to preach up. Woo! And grab me, hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. I'm about to scream and run and shout. But that's the God that we serve, people. That's who we serve. We should be on our knees every day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving me. What is it you want me to do today? You know, get in that word. There, ever since I've been put, and I served Christ. I was a pastor, swap pastor, um, Sunday school teacher. We were praising worship. You know, we were youth leaders. You know, and this was this all of this was before this fall. This this this, and I'm not even gonna call it a rabbit trail. It was it was a, a 180. It wasn't no, or a 360 or whatever you want to call it. You know, and I was serving the Lord, and the enemy come in at me, at our family, headstrong. Sister Elaine Homer, she said Satan tried to kill you twice when she when she spoke. He pulled me up. They try to kill you twice. And you want your goods. And I, I thought, Lord, what's my goods? You know? I mean, I know. What's my goods? And I, I walk around, what's my goods? I mean, I know what my kids are my goods. You know, my husband's my goods. But what's my goods? What, what is my good? And just the other day, especially after James Garner prayed for us. Because he prayed for our hearing. My hearing's not been restored. My natural hearing hasn't, but my spiritual hearing has hey, got restored. For him to have an ear, let him hear. Now, in that, that means what? In, in that word out there, let him, let him hear. Him who has an ear, that word ear, what does that word ear mean? You think it means this, right? It doesn't. It means to him who has an interest. An interest in what? 
in Christ, you. in your calling. So anyway, he opened my spiritual ear, and he made me understand that, and, and Pastor Rich, he confirmed it <clears throat> last week, I believe it was, where he was talking about how we have to, you know, face these things head, head on. Isn't that how he said it? You know, these things are past, they come up at us, but we've got to get in there and we've got to hit them head on. And he also said then after that, we do, we do spiritual warfare. And that struck me. That was at one point of God, I was sitting up there running the bay, and I, I thought, spiritual warfare. And you know, that's what this is. I tell my kids all the time. I was told whenever I first became born again, back 17 years ago, <laughs> almost 18, anyway, that uh, not to be going and looking for uh, demons and devils because, you know, that's just, that's not what we do. We should look for, toward God. And I believe that out of all my heart. But I also do know that there was only a half the truth to that because there is demons and devils out there. And everywhere I turn, they're there. They're trying to stop me. They're like brick walls, you know. And, and I have to be aware of their very presence. You understand what I'm saying? I have to know that they're out there. How am I going to know that? Only by developing my relationship with Jesus Christ so that he can, can, can work through me so that I can see them, so that I can start praying for people, so that I can start praying for my family, for my kids, for my country, so I can start seeing these things. I have to, I have to face them head on. It's a spiritual warfare, people. Mon or Monica, Haley asked me last night, I believe it was. She said, Nanny, was I in heaven before I was here? I really didn't know how to answer that. I really didn't. And I, I was like, well, I believe so, baby. I mean, I believe you were before, before you got put in your mama's belly. So, I mean, we were spirit. If we were created after God in his image, the spirit, mind, body, the how it goes. Spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. And then after Adam fell, of course, we became body, soul, and then spirit. So I believe on my heart, even with, with the Easter play that I did last year, that the Lord put on my heart, you know, God wants us to go back to the way that he intended it to be. You know, James Garner, he preached about, um, and I know this is confirmation, because I know God can speak to me. I know he has. And I know that he wants to do work for me, my family, my church. He's got so much going on in this place that it's just, it, it's, it just makes me just want to pass out, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh. But anyway, you know, when he said, when he started talking about um, dressing the, the garden and tilling the ground, God spoke that in my heart and what? about eight months ago, and I started doing the research on it, uh, and, and I, in the concordance, the Strong's concordance, and I, I thought, well, what's the difference between dressing the garden and tilling the ground? Because he told Adam that he put him in the, in the garden to dress and keep it. Then when he fell, he told him he had to till the ground. And when I looked it up in the concordance, it didn't mean, it meant the same thing. It meant to, to take care of, to turn over, to... What else did I say? Anyway, and it's the same thing. And I thought, you know, for six, seven, eight months, I was like, well, Lord, what does that mean? What does that mean? Praying about it, praying about it. And then in that meeting with James Garner, James Garner just brought it to light for us. Because before dressing and keeping the garden, you know, Adam pretty much just had to say, you know, this, this, this needs to be trimmed, or this needs to be blue, or you know, this needs some more fruit on it, or, you know, you know, this grass could be greener as he's walking through in the glory. You know, all he had to do was say. But then after the fall, after he, his spirit wasn't able to take care of that, then his flesh had to take care of that. <clears throat> I might need some water, I don't know. But anyway, um, then he had to start walking in the natural. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? First of all, spirit... Then we had to become natural. But when we got born again, that's why Jesus came. When we got born again, <coughs> then we were able to go back and, and be spirit. So what I'm trying to tell you people is this is a warfare. It's a spiritual warfare going on. The only way 
that we're going to be able to minister to anybody else is if we allow Jesus to minister to us. How are we going to do that? Now, we're going to have to give up some things. We're going to have to do some things. We're going to have to set aside some time. We're going to have to make that time. Well, what about, like he was saying, what about, you know, we got to get up and go to work? And i got to be up before 35 o'clock every morning. I, get, I don't get home until, you know, what time we know, 7, 7, 30. Time we eat and spend all the time with the family. It's 9 o'clock. we got to go back to bed when we get up all over again. Oh, my goodness. You know, from sun up to sun down, people used to get up and go to the pool, you know, or plows, or however, you know, on the, you know, and they could still find time. So can we. And, and, and I want to say all it takes is a few minutes. It takes more than just a few minutes, especially in these days and times that we're living in. I'm trying to say, people, it's time to get real. It's time to get real. And I promise you, whenever you get in your Word and you read your Word, it's everything that you need to live is in that Bible. Everything. It's time to get real. Get in your Bible, read your Bible, spend time with God. Pray. God will answer you. He said, if you seek, you'll find. He said, you know, uh, he said, if you resist the devil, and you start seeking God, the, the, the devil's going to flee. He's going to leave you alone. These are promises. You're not going to know what stuff is in there unless you get in there and, and you read it. You know, like Pastor Rich and Carrie's been doing. You guys, don't, don't fill your mind with, with video games. Don't fill your mind with, with TV. Don't fill your mind with just cartoons, you know. Just let it be Christian cartoons. Don't fill your mind with... With worries, don't fill your mind with movies. Don't fill your like he was talking. Don't fill your mind with you know all this stuff. Just focus on Jesus because without it, you know, when when the rapture does happen, are you going to be the one left behind? <coughs> then will you be wanting to listen? Will you be the wanting to heed to the Spirit? I mean, yeah, you better. I don't want to see any of you guys left behind. I don't want to be left behind. But it's time to get serious. And not and not in fear either. There's a scripture in the Bible. I, I haven't had a chance to look up a lot of scripture, but there's a scripture in there where it says to fear the Lord. What it, you remember what I'm talking about? That it it it, it um, transfers out to respect the Lord. Yeah, You don't remember? Anyway, I know what's in there. I'm, I'm sorry I don't have the, the exact scripture. But that word fear means respect. If you'll look some of these words up, you'll find out that they have a different meaning. When I was in work the other day, you know, and I was thinking about these different realms. I, I, we, we've had discussions about heaven, and, and I know y'all heard the discussions about heaven as a dimension. And I believe it was, uh, was it Garner or was it Copeland that was talking about that? I've been planning, so I don't remember. Who? Homer, Homer. Homer. yeah. Homer. That it be in a dimension or something, and glory portals, and anyway, all that yeah. stuff. But the word fear, I just this just comes to my to my spirit. We can we, anything that is two sided because the devil's always going to come in as an angel of light. He's always going to make things seem like it's him. I mean, like it's God, but it's really not. It's him. But anyway, the word fear is just the opposite of faith, right? And what was one of the translations that people use for fear? Do y'all remember? False evidence. False evidence. Appearing real. False evidence. Appearing real. One of them. Well, the Lord also spoke to me saying that people can fearfully accept alternate realms or realities. Or you can faithfully accept alternate realms or realities. So, I mean, you, if, if you don't have that faith, if you can't accept that faith and you've not truly accepted Jesus into your heart, there is a spiritual realm, and we have to walk in that spiritual realm that we were first created mm -hmm. at anyway, where we come out of. And then God put us, you know, in our mother's womb, and now we've been restored back through Jesus Christ dying on the cross. So we have to walk. We have to search that. That spiritual realm out, and we have to come head head on, head strong. Get in your Bible, read your Bible, 
listen to the word. Develop that spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to to make it through this. We're not trying to instill fear. We're trying and trying to instill faith. But the more that you learn, the more that you're going to grow. The more that you're going to grow, the more that you know. And what does that mean? That whenever you come across people, that you'll be able to take God with you into these places that he was talking about, the pastor was talking about. Whenever you walk in a room, they're going to say, there's something different about her. I wonder what it is. You know? And then in conversation, they're going to be able to talk. They're going to be able to talk about Jesus Christ. So get your priorities in order, like Carl was talking about earlier. You know, make sure, reassure your salvation, I guess. That's a heater, isn't it? Reassure your salvation. That's what that means. Get in there and study. Show yourself approved. And get real. Don't get left. Get real, don't get left. And, and I want to say this. If the Lord was to come back right now, just next five minutes, or, you know, or, I, or I was to just drop over in the next five minutes, I would say this to you guys. You're laughing at me, Brother Nick. <laughs> you know, I would say this. Don't get left behind. Don't have to go through all that. You know, get it right. Develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because then afterwards, you're just going to, you're just asking for more to be, I don't want to say torture, but, you know, it's going to be harder. Is there a chance? Is there hope? Yeah. But it's going to be so much harder. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to preach Jesus then. You know what I'm saying? What are you looking at me like that for? You won't have to preach Jesus, but you'll want to, especially after you know the Word of God and you get left behind. You can't help it. Exactly. That's what I meant. So don't get left behind. Get in and get real. Get in. Put on your spiritual football cleats and, and let's let's build this army. Let's stand this arm, stand in this army on the front line. That's one of that's one of our columns is to be spiritual warriors. So we can do this. I, I just challenge all of y'all to get in your word. And get in your relationship with God and trust Him. Trust Him with everything in you. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 How far we all dismiss? Yep. You know how to play a song? You know how to sing it? Yeah. Let's all stand and let's worship Jesus one more time. Amen. Thank you.